What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the 579th video making Songbringer. Today, I'm going to be working on some just miscellaneous tasks. I've titled this video Stuff. Let's see what miscellaneous task I'll work on first, eh? Um, if you're video watching this video after you know a, a while of watching other videos or whatever, um, just to give you some context, um, this has been a whole huge push of like the last two weeks, getting the game ready for PlayStation 4 and um, Xbox One and stuff. All that has to be done like months in advance of the game's actual release. So, um, <clears throat> so it's been a lot of work. Arcane, what's up, man? Okay, and I was thinking about you the other day, actually, because a couple of your suggestions I still am trying to get to on my list. I forget what it was, but you had a really great suggestion on here somewhere. Here it is. From Arcane. Make some enemy projectiles go through pillars to be fair versus the ghost sword. That was a good suggestion, man. I'm going to get to that at some point. <laughs> at some point, I will find... Man, it's freaking... Part of the psychological burden of making a video game in such a way is having such a long list of things to do that never seems to get done. You know, it's like, I'll, I'll fix like 20 things, but uh, I'll do a playthrough and then add 40 things. So, I constantly feel like I'm running through sand up a big steep hill that just keeps getting steeper and taller. Okay, so what should I do first, eh? Man, I think my psyche needs to work on this one. And this one. I got this super frustrated, negative comment type player on Steam. And these are the two actionable things I think I can get out of their, their comments. Nope, nope. I took into... I, I definitely read every single one of those categorize them, prioritize them and stuff. Some of them some of them I've already done. I know I've already done a few of them or work them work them into other things too. What well, have you been, man? What's new? Let's do this one first. This is kind of easy. Players sometimes get frustrated because Rock will put this sword away, especially right when you're going into another room. This is kind of a now that you there's a now that this is something from an ancient bit of Songbringer where um, you didn't have I didn't back then there was no lighter item and there's a lot a lot of other items that there's some items basically now that help you put your sword away. So if you want to if you want to actually put your sword away, you can do that. So I really don't see there any need to have an auto put the sword away or at least that should go away go to a small small time so you have to literally be standing there for like 30 seconds or something before he sheaths the sword in fact let's just do it that way that will change the systems the least I think it's called auto sheath I can find that no not auto sheath Yeah, that one, that one I can't really do. It goes against the design principles of Songbringer um, to put an outline when you're when you're behind something invisible. The way I wanted to solve that problem is to put things on the ground that you can't walk. You can't just can't walk behind stuff where you can't see yourself, or at least at least you're not that invisible. You know, like you're not. There, it's not you can't get too deep to the point where so a lot, a lot of improvements have been made in that regard like for example rock faces those big rock things um, you used to be able to walk behind those and now you can't they're just, they're just placed on on the area a little bit differently so that you can never really walk behind a huge rock face thing so that's that's my approach to solving that solving that but doing it in a different way than most games do it I don't I don't know, aesthetically, I find it more aesthetically pleasing to not have outlines of characters when you're behind things. 
So I want to keep that aesthetic, but still solve the problem, you know? Oh, the giant tree now, huh? That's a good point. One way I could solve that is to take the giant tree's uh, leaves. Was that, are you talking about the giant tree with leaves or the giant tree without leaves? Maybe it's auto dash sheath or auto sheath. Maybe it's move system. Um, no. I know it has something to do with idle duration. Oh, uh, it was without leaves, huh? Well, that doesn't, that's not what I was thinking then. Hmm. Well, I will take a look at that. The big trees, making that a little bit clearer. A little less, you know, there's there's simple ways I can I can put something like behind the tree so you can't really stand there. Or there's just simple ways to solve that without having to do the outlines. Attack system, maybe? There it is, sheath sword of idol. Hero inactive time one. Hero inactive time one. If I change that, is that gonna change other stuff? You're fine. You should be studying. Oh yeah, I hear you. Oh yeah, state finals. That's right, man. You've been you've been working on that. That's cool. Trust me, I'm an engineer. How's it going with the with Songwringer? I was going really good, man. Yeah. It's um gosh, I wish I wish it was easier to finish a game. Sometimes, you know what I mean? It's it's really difficult when you get to the end of a video game because you got so much to do, or at least I do. Whenever I'm at the very end of a video game, there's just so much to do. So much so many little tasks to get finished. And then Add on, add on top of all the things you have to do, like technically and engineering wise and creatively and music wise and all those things. Add on top of that, all the business matters you have to deal with too, like emailing people. Sometimes it's I take, I spend like an hour or two a day just having to email people or things like checking in code. I have to manage like three different code based versions of Songbringer at this point which is a huge time suck. You know, it's like I'll spend an hour a day just checking in code, you know? So, man, it's tough. And then add on top of that, add on top of that, like unhappy players and frustrations and people like literally shitting on your video game. And it's like, it makes it all really, really tough. So I just, gosh, man, at this point, I almost, <laughs> I almost wish we were just all done. Like just take a vacation or something, but that's not going to happen either. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely want to do some DLCs for sure. Um, assuming that Songbringer does well uh, financially, you know, um, I'll be able to do a DLC. And I don't know whether it'll be free or it'll be paid or whatever, or maybe it'll just be free updates, but some kind of, yeah, updates to the Songbringer world. If it, if it does well. Okay, it does look like this is only in one place and it happens after four seconds. So I'll at least pick that th like 30 seconds or something crazy. Hero in active time one, is that's it? Okay, let's get a situation where um, that the, the player just puts away the sword. So we'll go to like dungeon one. <clears throat> I know, right? I know, yeah, it's, it's, they are the vocal minority. It's just, it's so crazy because that vocal minority that like spews hate and 
negative pessimism, negativity can so affect you so much more than the 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 unvocal majority of players that are either happy or just neutral, you know, <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm still learning some lessons about how to psychologically handle those things. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get the best things I can out of it, right? Like, yes, this pl this player, even though they're saying something pessimistic, they are... Is there, if there is something actionable in what they're saying, if there's something I can do to make the game better so it's it's not going to frustrate people as much, then great. There's something positive I can take and put into Songbringer. That's what I'm trying to do. It's just the part... It's just it's just the way that person puts it that makes me feel like shit, you know? So, it just, like, destroys hope. It's weird. But, yeah, I guess I'm just having one of those days. But, um, yeah, let's get back to doing some, doing some code. I'll stop, I'll stop ranting. That's a good point, you know, right? If they're willing, if they're willing to take the time to actually say something like that, then that does mean that at some point, at some level, they do care, right? That's a good way to look at it. Thanks, Arcane. <laughs> Tommy, what's up, man? How you doing, Tommy? All right, so if I take out the sword. Four seconds to go by, and he puts it away. Yeah. Okay, let's just make that, um, let's take that a whole, like, 30 seconds or so? I'm guessing maybe 15 or 20. Let's, let's think about this. Yeah, let's, let's bump it up to, like, 16, nah. You know what? Let's name it something actually more descriptive. Auto sheath duration. 16, ah, I think 16 seconds is a little too short. I'm gonna go with 20. Whoa. Where did this come from? Whoa. That was so weird. Yeah, yeah, right. Either they they want to improve. Yeah. You got a few days to chill out, man. Nice. Uh, well, I've been kind of overwhelmed actually, with bugs and stuff but I'm getting through it how's the, how's your project going man how's the um how's your team Send it, yes, send it to Apple. <laughs> They're going to totally note it. <laughs> Good point, man. I should be sending all those reports to Apple. Hey, Songbringer crashed again because well, I was developing it and I did something weird. Oh, I forgot to do my freaking... This is a pretty cool technique, actually. For um, just kind of focusing and getting a lot of things done in one day. Like, actually, I'm pretty proud of myself because I did get... There's a couple days last week where I got 30 things done on my Trello list in one day. 
you know, it doesn't help that I add 40 things, but at least I got 30 things done in one day, right? So the trick is just, I set a timer for 15 minutes every single time I start a task and it kind of helps me to focus and get something actionable and, and done, you know, something, some, something I can commit in those 15 minutes if possible. Sometimes it has to go to 30 minutes and 45 minutes to get that one thing done, but most of the time, most of the time I can, if it's a short thing, I can get it done in 15 minutes, which is cool if I focus. Your master thesis? Sweet, dude. You were chosen in the top three to attend a conference? Dude, what? Nice, Arcane. Is there a, is there a high five emote? What's the high five emote? Dude, Arcane, high five, man. That's awesome. What's the, what kind of conference is it, man? When is it? Oh, right, right, it's summertime, I forgot. Uh-huh, planning and brainstorming. Oh, right, the Google Digital Garage thing. What is it, what is it that you're taking? What course is it that, that they're actually um, teaching? How does that work again? So basically, if I take the sword out, it should be a whole 20 seconds before he puts it away. Cool. It's fine. Hopefully that'll make people less frustrated sometimes. Okay, well, I set the timer a little bit late there, but the point is that that got done. I'm calling that one fixed. All oh, right, you thought nobody would care, but they did. Oh, I know, right? These sound like definitely worthy projects too. Bionic arm, hexapod robot. Cool, right, so tell me more about your autonomous drone. Like what, what makes your drone unique? I'm not really familiar with with uh, drones that much, so help me out. Are there are there like drones out there that are already autonomous, or is like this um, one of the first new ones, or what? Okay, so I'm gonna cross that one off the list. Let's do this next one. The player got frustrated when they couldn't just leave the swordless dungeon. This one's simple enough. It saves your progress right when you enter the swordless dungeon. I'm just going to move that to saving it right before you enter. So if you really want to rage quit, and while you're inside this the swordless dungeon, you can start over and not have to be stuck in it. Alright, um, so first thing, it shouldn't save your game when you go into a swordless dungeon. That's going to be in flux. And it's something about a dungeon. Arrive dungeon, here we go. Oh, right, right. Business online, help it grow. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
It sounds like a really good thing to learn anyways. If you think about it, like a small, a small like indie game development studio is almost like, you know, similar to a coffee shop or a small bakery in the sense that you only have a few people there working with it, working on the game and stuff. How big's your team anyways? It's like, how many people? All right, so let's make this not save your game. This is kind of, hmm. Six people, yeah. It's a good number. All right, so it shouldn't save your game if you're going into a swordless. Let's get this uh, variable. Oh, did I set a timer? I did for the last one. All right, I set a new timer. 15 minutes. Let's get this done. Okay, so it's a classic drone you bought, but then but they have remote controls. You retrieve the data, stitch them together. Oh, you had to get like terrain data? Whoa. Whoa, and then provide all that to clients. Oh, sweet, dude. That's amazing. That's a really cool project you're working on, man. This is more than just a master's thesis, man. This is something you could commercialize. You could it could benefit people, yeah. Other people are using it too. That's really cool, man. Wow. What are you going to call it? All right, <clears throat> the save game start pause function. All this really needs to happen. All that needs to happen whenever the player starts the drink flux or walks into the swordless. Okay, so this can be its own function. Like save game or something. Definitely. What's up, Leon Hart? Yes, you can ask me how old I am. I'm 37. Okay, um, save. I guess we'll just call this like.
save game with pause, whatever. I guess we need to name this like, you know, give it a, a position as well. And now this is starting to, th I'm starting to think this should actually be a game function in case I do want to call this from somewhere else. Oh, okay. One build website. Build a Java app. Oh, wow. Wow. All right. Super cool project, though, man. Good. I'm so excited for you to have it like. Um, to have it like showing you that kind of success and you weren't even expecting it. How cool is that? I'm excited for you, man. Okay, so set, save, game, start, pause. Let's look for all the places where we do that. This happens a lot in Flux. See, same thing here in our arrived overworld. But is there other, see these other ones, they don't actually save the hit points. Some of them do, some of them don't. Yeah, this needs to be a function of game. All right, so game. Call this one save game, just like the other one. But this time, it, you also get a position and hit points. And if hit points are negative one default, it'll just look up the current hero's hit points. Now, that's not, I guess. Now, yeah, this is not meant to be like that. Ah. I guess you could pass in, if you pass in negative one hit points, that means that you're intentionally, do okay, that's good. I'll keep it like that. Uh, yes, my first big solo game, my first ever solo video game project. I've worked in teams before. You don't even know how you made it? That's cool, man. Arcane, what, what OS do you use?
Okay, so I'm basically just making this function available for other other places of the game to call. So we can set the save hit points, the save game start pause, and save the game in one call. Just make it a little simpler. Oh, right. If the hit points are less than zero, then hit points equals whatever the game. So there, I can automatically, there's no need to like, for that to be a bur burdensome thing. Are you using Win 10? Oh, right, yeah. If you're a gamer, you gotta have Windows too, that's for sure. Um, I really like my setup here. I got a, I have a Mac laptop, so, and then, it, and my Mac has, um, uh, I have elementary OS, which is a Linux install right here on the same hard drive. And also I have a Windows partition. So I have Windows 10, Mac OS, and Linux all on one hard drive. And it, um, and it's also solid state too. So it's like super quick. All of those OSs load fast. I really love it. I really like having a triple boot set up because it just means that I can easily make Songbringer for all those platforms. You know, if I need to, I can reboot into those platforms. But actually what I use for doing most of my building for cross-platform is VMware Fusion. I just load a, a virtual machine of Windows and a virtual machine of Linux and just compile the game there because it's so much quicker than having to reboot. And it's also automatable. I, I should actually be, I should automate that so that I can just like, you know, start a build and like an hour later come back and it's all ready for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Right now there's some definitely some clicking and typing and stuff like that I have to do to make all the builds happen each time to get the game on Steam and do its updates and stuff. So yeah, but it's really nice to automate things. Anything you can, just automate it. So you don't have to do it twice. Save you some time in the long run. All right, we got this new gate save game method and flux can call it. So we don't need to call save game with pause or whatever. We can just call game save game with new area pause. and whatever the player's hit points are. Yeah. Yeah. I like Linux. Linux is cool. It's got a good, it's got a really good rock solid OS it's built on. Some of the stuff that's built on top of it's a little janky, but you know, and you got to really get it. It's really DIY. That's what I love about Linux. It's super DIY. You can you can literally recompile anything you want in your OS, and just mess with things in in ways that you can definitely cannot on other OSs. You like elementary? I like that one. You switch to it for a month. Oh oh, you switched entirely to it. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. You switched for a whole month to elementary for doing like your daily stuff. Ah, see, this is kind of what we want to do at the end of phase downstairs, which is actually right here, probably. Yeah, is level. No, this is fade in. I want downstairs. Where's downstairs? Downstairs begin, downstairs end. Here we go. If we have, this is where we'll save the game.
constants is extra level. No, is underground entrance. So we we enter. If we're entering. Um, the underground entrance and it's the swordless one. You're a programmer since you were 16? Cool, man. You made some games with Game Maker? Cool. Now you're doing your own engine? Sweet. Well, um, it's yeah, it's consuming a lot of your time and you're afraid your game will fail. Why are you afraid your game will fail? And let me tell you, I can, I can totally relate. I feel like my game will fail every day. It's a constant roller coaster. Nice. So you're doing jet brains. That's cool. Nice, man. Right, me too. If only all games worked on Linux. Oh man, I can relate to doing that too, man. I worked at a, a software company for a while and it sucked my soul. I'm so, I'm so glad. You know, I'm kind of lucky because my, my father encouraged me when I was a child to follow my passions and to do the things I was excited about and loved to do because my father also had a soul-sucking job for his for most of his life. 25 years of his life, he was a he worked at the post office. He was a postmaster and he encouraged me to to like he wanted me to have my own business from when I was a kid. So when I was like in when I was a teenager, my dad was like, "You know what? I'd rather have you start your own business right now than get a job." And my mom was like, well, he should get a job because he needs to know what jobs are like and stuff. And, you know, they, they both had great points. But if it wasn't for my dad's encouragement to, you know, be business oriented from then, I wouldn't have gotten to be such a this today. I, I couldn't get a job, man. It's like it would it would it would tear my soul apart. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel right for me to have jobs. Because I'm not in charge. I'm not doing what I want to do. And, and I know I can do it. And I know I can succeed on my own in business. So, right? So, why not? So, but anyways, I think it's all thanks to my dad's encouragement. So, thanks, dad. <laughs> you know, he deserves, he deserves some credit and some honor for that. <clears throat> so, this is the underground entrance where... How do I tell that this one is swordless? You gotta get the underground entrance Z's like level Z. Maybe you can just get the level Z from the underground entrance Z. It's been a minute since I worked on this bit of code. Oh, but Leonhardt, as far as like moving yourself into a position where you can succeed at doing video games, I'm I'm proud of you, man. I'm I'm excited for you that you quit that you quit your job and you started learning to make games and doing what you're passionate about rather than, you know, than uh, working for other people doing whatever they're wanting and whatever that is doing sucking your soul away. I know how that feels, man. But um. If I can help you in any way about your fears with being afraid of your game failing, I would love to, you know, because I feel the same way a lot of the time. The line numbers, yeah, why is it better to have only the selected line show the number and the rest being increments and decrements of it? Arcane, because it's like this, check this out. Vim has some sweet features. Um, like this, if I want to just copy this entire function right here, let's say I want to just delete this function. I can go with three keystrokes, I can delete this entire function, D, 8, J. There it goes. 
what if I want to like, and see what I did there as I used the line number eight, right? I'm deleting, D is the command to start deleting stuff in Vim, right? And then eight J means go eight lines down and delete it. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do when you have these this um, relative line numbering going. The same thing with copying a function. Let's say I want to copy that entire function, 8yj, and then I can paste it, and now I have two copies of that function. And I do this frequently for things like three little line type things. Instead of, the, the, the one way you could do it is to start highlighting, move two lines down, copy that data, and then paste, right? That's a really, that's really long. If you just go, if you're just on that line and you just go y2j and paste, it's so much faster. So there's a lot of benefits to using relative line numbering, but that's basically them in a nutshell. Oh, you're betting everything on this game? Yeah. There's no game dev companies to work for. You're all on your own with your savings. Yes. You really want to go want to go back to the other companies. This is exactly this is exactly this position that I was in before I started this game, Songbringer. Really, man. I was living on my savings at the very end of my savings. Look at the top. Every single every single one of the files in Songbringer has this statement at the top that just says courage. This was just a note to myself to be courageous and and do this game even if I felt like it was going to fail. You know what I mean? Because I did. I didn't I didn't know if people would even like it. My whole point was I'm going to try and do a Kickstarter and see if people like this video game enough. And that I had to have courage because it was I had no money. I had no support, no 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 nothing, no royalties, no income. I just had to take my savings and go, "Can I can I make it long enough to do a Kickstarter that people will like enough that they'll they'll back it and I can do this video game?" And if it wasn't for those Kickstarter backers, I'll, man, it was one of the best experiences of my life because it it showed me that there were people out there that were willing to support what I was doing, which means I had an idea that some people wanted to, of a game that people wanted to play. So it was very reaffirming, you know? Yeah, courage is your health. And that all comes from just me wanting to be courageous. In, this was my... This is my courageous choice for my life at that point. And I would encourage you, man, if you got if you're if this is a courage thing for you and you're in like you know what I mean? All I'm trying to do is encourage you, man, because I know what it feels like to be where you're at. Exactly. I know exactly how you feel. I know that's a bold statement, but I probably don't know exactly how you feel. I'm just saying that I've been in a very similar situation. Oh, that's it. There's this one point where it sets the valid player position. That's got to get... Oh, man. I'm running out of context here. Here it is. It, there's this thing that makes it so... All right, you can already save in an extra level. No, this is... There's this one minute code where it... Um, it... Um, I think it's in game. It's game load pause. Oh, here it is. Yeah. 
this just makes it so that it, it doesn't allow you, it forces a, a good starting position, so it, you can start at the sword Z. Here, there's a couple more areas we're going to need to start at. Area pattern equals the entrance to... I think 04 is what we're looking at here. I think that's the entrance to the cup dungeon. Yeah, that's the cup entrance. Cool. So the game can save itself at the cup entrance, and the game can save itself at the first. Um, is, is level, is that the wing I want to call? Maybe, is level, area, area pause, dot Z, or wait, it's definitely is underground entrance. <sighs> um, dude, I guess it's really not that bad to just leave it like that, right? You can let the players save the game if they're in an underground entrance, which is almost where you would go and save at anyways. Okay, let's leave it like that. Let's finish these. And this thing looks like the last point where it needs. This is cool. This is a little bit of semantic compression, I guess. That's a really nice thing to have done. Okay, and there's going to be one error in flux. Leonhart, what are your plans for how to uh, make money with your video game? Um, do you have any plans to do a crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo or something? Or I, f I found that basically when I was afraid to fail with my video game, it helped to have some kind of actual proof that it was something that some people would want and that's what's so validating and affirming about doing a Kickstarter is that you know you can you can not only can you can you get some funds but it really helps the psychological aspect of making video games that yeah what I'm doing is something that people want you know and sometimes you can tweak a design or something like that and just make it more of what people want 
And it, and a Kickstarter will really help you do that too, because people will give you comments and things like that, and they'll and they'll give you suggestions that you know can really help your your game. All right, let's see if this works. No, no, that's not it. Oh, get level Z though. Ah, that's it, get level Z. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so level Z. Oh, no, no, not, we need to go. World is swordless. Level Z. There. Yeah, so if it's an underground entrance and it's a swordless and you're going downstairs, then save the game start position. Actually, save more than that. Save the whole game. All right, now we need to also save when we start the flux drink. Phase drink, maybe. Phase drink. You will? Oh, cool, man. That's good to hear. Yeah, too. Totally, totally. Right, yeah, it is. If you're making your own game engine, it's going to take a long time. Phase drink begin. That's probably a good place to do it. We destroy the top hat. Let's save the game. And we save at the old area pause. Okay, now we got all the code finished. Let's do the testing. So we need to be at the entrance I think it's negative 11 the entrance to the first swordless dungeon we need jib um, novel this should be good Oh, this one isn't it. it. Must be negative twelve or ten. That was four, so this is probably negative ten actually. Yeah, here it is. Okay, we don't need this to debug the sound anymore. Let's save like that. Okay, so we need to basically we need to walk into this dungeon first too. So we need to go out of here. Save. Start here. Walk into the dungeon, and it should just save the game. Good. It saves the game right there. And then, if I do this whole sequence, story sequence and stuff, um, and then die or something or quit. Skip this. Oh, he's bombed in ice. Okay, so if I walk down in here, it should not save the game. Oh, it saved the game. Damn it.
Okay, a breakpoint inside where it saves is probably going to be a nice thing here. I think there's a function called save actually in a NIMS. There it is. Setting a breakpoint here is probably a good place to do it. Okay, so let's run through that again and find out what actually called save. Yes, man, yeah. It's true. No one else could do it for you. Yeah, man. There's great rewards in life for risking things, for 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 having courage and doing something about it. You know, for, for having the courage to follow your dreams. Most people never do that, man. Most people don't follow their dreams because it's tough. It's tough to take risks. It's tough to like dream of a better life. It's easy to go get a job and just work for other people. skip this bit next time oh good it's open at least this time okay so go downstairs why does it break or why does it save who's calling save game save game called from phase drink No, 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 no. First of all, phase fade in or phase drink. Okay, basically, this shouldn't happen there. Let's get rid of that. Phase drink fade in should not save. I'm kind of, I'm kind of nervous about how this is being called for. F that means on fade in begin. What's the? Well, where is this at? Um, there it is. Why did it call drink when I went down into the? Oh, because down the swordless also calls drinks. Okay. This seems pretty weird to me. But I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it slide. I'll allow it. I'm gonna allow that for just a moment so I don't break everything else. Oh wait, this time it's gonna we gotta go back to Negative. Okay, we're still there. Okay, this time it shouldn't save. Nice. Okay, I'm here in the swordless dungeon now. Let's say I'm frustrated. Let's say I, I'm hating life and I want to rage quit on Songbringer because I can't figure out this dungeon. I'm save and quit. Okay, this time it's going to trigger save. That's good. But it shouldn't save the position. So I got the save icon, but if I start again, it should be back where I was. Oh, damn it. Why? Alright, yeah, cheers, man. Thank you. Good luck, man.
I guess we need a breakpoint in set save game start pause. Who called that? Now we need to go back to negative 10. Try this again. Oh wow, I guess it was when I saved and quit. No? Oh, did I just forget to run from... Oh, never mind. Forgot to run within Xcode. So I've, obviously, I've gone way over my time limit here for this one little bug. Probably spent 45 minutes on it already. But I'm going to go ahead and set a timer anyway, so I've got, let's say, 10 more minutes on this max. Because I should be done with this in the next 10 minutes. What's up? Why aren't you running? What's going on? Run! There we go. All right, so phase pause and Oh, it's just because I have debug stuff on. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I've got to debug this in release mode, which is going to take about one or two minutes to get this compiled. But this will be good. Um, basically, what this will do is, as a player, you won't feel stuck inside the Swordless Dungeon. It'll just save your save your game right before you go into either one of the Swordless Dungeons. And then if you you know if you're if you're if you feel stuck, all you gotta do is save and quit, and you won't be stuck the next time you start. That that also makes the whole save game like maybe you invested in that save game. Maybe you maybe you already like played through one dungeon of Songbringer and you got you killed the first boss. You're feeling good. Then you go in, you follow zero, you get yourself into the swordless dungeon. Now you feel totally stuck. You can't figure it out. The puzzles are just, you can't, for some reason you're frustrated. You quit. The way it was before, if you started again, you'd be right back in that swordless dungeon, still stuck. So this is a good thing. So I got 10 minutes left to debug the last, to debug this last issue here. And then, well, there's one more thing. I got to go test the drink phase too. So make sure that works as well. Takes so long to compile with uh, with the stream running. It's constantly encoding video, so the compiler has a lot less to do, or a lot less uh, bandwidth.
Okay, we're compiled. Which one are we going to start with? Let's do this negative 10 one. Oh, I need the exact position in release mode. Okay, so the exact position we're talking about is zero, zero, negative 10. Right, okay. And it should have saved when I went in here, so. Let's, let's check that. If I started at, at the home position. Or maybe just somewhere in the world near there. It's just, it's forcing me to start at the start pause. That's okay. Let's go. All right. So now if I enter this. It saved my start pause. If I quit. Run again. Yeah, it starts me there. Cool. So that's good. We confirm that you can start in release mode here at this dungeon entrance. And if I go down here, it should not save. Good. And if I go here and I want to save and quit, it's got that icon, but it did not save my point. So if I go here and start again, be back here in the cave with Jib, ready to go. If I really don't want to go ahead and go that way, I don't have to. Okay, just leave. All right, that's confirmed. Debug that. That's I'm happy with that. Now I got to check the other one. Um, see where that is. Uh, um. That would be Psychedelic Dungeon 2. Psychid. No. What? Oh. World, uh, world, world Verbosity is off in release mode, so. Uh, just run in debug mode real quick. There's dungeon five. All right, the entrance to five. Let's put it right at 025 actually first.
18 seconds left. So I need to go here. Okay, I saved my point here, but uh, that's because I, I, um, I succeeded at the dungeon. Okay, that's good. Now, let's start again. All right, if I go off the screen, come back on. Good, it shouldn't save the point there. Let's do the drink flux. Maybe we'll save. Just got the cup equipped and the position still good. If I start drinking, it's gonna save my point. Position. 14-4-0. Good. Saving the point there. Yeah, save the game right before you drink. So if you, let's say I go in here in this dungeon, I'm frustrated. I want to leave. There's no way to leave. Now there is. You can save and quit and essentially leave the dungeon. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And the one thing I want to confirm is that it does not save my point. Good. It didn't trigger that breakpoint. And if I start again, I'm back there. Perfect. Done. Ready to check in. Debugged. Let's make sure that this all looks good as far as the diff goes. The diff it, man. All right, arrived at the dungeon. Got the new area. Constance is levels. Is level. We had has bits entrance and not count down, countdown and also don't save. Yeah, don't save if you're in a new swordless dungeon and you've arrived there. Okay, this next thing not has render countdown. This is oh, it arrived overworld. Right, overworld. You want to save. But as, but as long as you don't have the countdown. And that's new area pause and negative one, good. Constant scale level. This is phase downstairs. This is a new thing where if you walk into the underground entrance of the swordless dungeon. Saves your game. With whatever health you had and whatever point you were at, save game, new area pause, eat a health HP. Okay, this one is world get pause, eat a health at HP, it's good. Phase drink saves your game. Oh, what? Yeah, phase drink begin, but not phase drink on flux began or whatever. There, yeah, it's phase drink, phase drink. Yeah, that's really important that that's gone. This is important to allow you to start your save game there. Area patterns, entrance to 04, or it's an underground entrance. So this is a big thing. It's allowing, the game is now allowing you to save your game at any under, no, it doesn't actually save your point. It just allows you to start there. Okay, this is good. It allows you to start the game at an underground entrance if you've saved your uh, the game there. All right, brilliant. Let's let's check that in. Uh, another bug off the list. Make sure that got committed, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. Two bugs done. Those are some good things.
Um, those were more significant than they seemed because they help my psyche. Okay, well, that's going to be it for today's stream. I um, hope you all had a good time watching and or learning or whatever. And I hope you're all having a great, making great progress in y'all's lives and stuff. I'm rooting for you. Thanks for, thanks for rooting for me too with Songbringer. I appreciate it. So, oh, here's something cool. Um, I, all, I follow the guys that uh, make Crawl, Barney and Dave. These guys are awesome. He, really, he posted a really cool article about why we're seeing so much pixel art. It's got a really nice perspective. I'll share this link. So um, that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you all next time.